Hello, John again, and welcome to Tutorial 35, Episode 39. Yes, I said it, 39. And in this episode, we are going to take advantage of a new feature that was put into CBM Prod Studio uh, in June, 3.14. And that allowed you to encode the screens using RLE encoding. Which means that we can make the screens take up less space uh, in the 64 due to some, some simple compression. Now, RLE encoding is a very basic concept for compression so to speak and the way it works is here we go so if we go look getting all professional look got slides and everything <laughs> need a slurp of my tea right so this is one of the screens and the whole thing takes a thousand bytes that's a thousand bytes of memory on the 64 which is one sixty-fourth of it a roughly yeah and I means you only can have 64 screens but then you've got no memory for everything else so we need some form of uh, encoding and RLE stands for uh, run length encoding or something like that um, and the way it works is it looks at the characters on the screen and then goes, is that the same as that? Yes, it is. Is that the same as that? Yes, it is. Is that the same as that? Yes, it is. And carries on and carries on and carries on. And then it comes and goes, is that the same as that? No, it isn't. Well, how many did we have of that one then? And it puts that down. So we end up with something like this. You know, the character code 32, which is the space. And the number of them is 77 on this screen before it changes. And that's what RLE encoding is, is you have the character followed by how many times that character appears in one sequence. So the next one would be this character, which I think is 88, and it would go, right, is this character the same as this one? Yes, it is. Is this character the same as this one? No, it isn't. Well, how many did I have? And in that case, it would be two. And then it would carry on with space, and it's for another 38, and then another two 88s, and then... 22 30s 30 spaces because that's when this happens now <coughs> excuse me and for this type of screen RLE encoding is really really good because we have a lot of characters that are the same so we can compress this screen down pretty pretty well and the and and this this one is called interlace or interleaf that's it interleaf interleaf RLE encoding because you're mixing the character with the uh, how many times it appears CBM product studio as well as doing interleaf does grouping and what it does it splits them into two streams one is dedicated character data and the, and the other one is how long and these characters appear for and it allows then for you to then you can then decode that and recreate the screens and that is what we are going to do we are going to we got four screens that takes 4k up yeah they've just had a competition where you can to to build to develop a game in 4k and we've got four screens taking exactly the same amount of memory up so we are going to basically try and implement the RLE encoding in Neptune Lander because those screens are screaming out for this sort of um, encoding. So this is what we're going to do. So let's get into it. So this is, it's been a while since I've, it's been a while since I've been in here, been too, doing too much hunchbacking. So we have got our character the screen data there and so if I if I build it to memory yeah so it's not gonna run it if I build it to memory 
you'll see what I mean. Cool, it does take a while. Right, so it's popped up. So let's spin it so we can see it. There we go. Oh, I forgot to put the keyboard on. Hang on, hang on. There we go. So if we go all the way down to the bottom, because that's normally where it is. Keep going, John. Keep going. Keep going. It's there eventually. You'll get to it. There we go. So this is screen... So this is the color data for screen one. This is the character data for screen one. Then, so that's the um, title screen. And now we've got the level screen because we only have character data. There we go. So that's level one. This is level two, level three. And as you can see, so if we pick this, if we just pick on this one, it starts at 6F a zero and finishes at seven three eighty eight and that is that almost a thousand bytes almost well it is a thousand bytes it is a thousand bytes and so our four screens takes 4k of 4k of memory up so what we can do is this right so let's close that and that is if you look in the online help, make that smaller, smaller, come on, smaller, I want smaller, thank you, smaller, what is wrong with you, smaller, that's taken both screens up as, <laughs> why, I have no idea. Anyway, here we go. So in your online out, if we go into using assemble and the directives, you scroll down, you'll see the new um, commands for ink bin. Yeah, ink bin. So at the moment we do color. So what we need to do is we need to do interleaf because I want. I want the character and then how many to follow on from each other. So all we have to do is type in interleaf. Now, if I do build to me, ooh, that's debugging and I didn't want to do that. Oh well. I'll wait for it to finish because it's going to fail. Because we've just changed the way the um, program works there you go and that is not showing on the screen at all ah ok we'll sort that out what is going on there we go don't know what was going on there oh Anyway, so build program to memory. So we should see what the output is. Here it is. Scroll to the bottom, John. Scroll, scroll. Like your life depends on it. Right, so there's screen four, screen three, screen two. So you see how big these data blocks are. And then screen one. Look at that. Starts at 67D0 and finishes at 6942. Oh my God. Let's get the calculator out. So let's work this out, shall we? Ooh, calculator, where you go? So, so um, let's get into hex. So, six, six, nine, four, two, minus 
six, 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 seven, D zero. Wow, 370 bytes of data. That's a compression rate of what, 60%? Wow. And that's what we're gonna try and do. All right, so we're gonna try and do this and we're gonna change our code to allow us to read that encoded stuff. So we're gonna do it on all of them. So comma interleaf. comma interleaf comma interleaf now between these we're going to have to do this but byte 0 comma 0 because the system doesn't have any term, form of terminator so we're going to do it now what it's going to do what we how we get that data is if we open up a landscape so here we are yeah landscape and if you do file export assembler there's a new thing now called compression use run length encoding and I want interleaf so I'm going to click OK and what it does it produces text that then you can copy and paste straight into your files so it's done all four screens. So that screen, so where are we? That screen one, that screen two, screen three, and screen four. Yeah? So you can do that, but we're going to get it done automatic. Yeah? We're going to get the pre compiler to do it automatically. So now we've done that, we need to now change our screen. Uh, system which is this all right we need to now change that because we are now no longer doing a copy yeah so we'll run that out and we'll run these out as well so we'll keep keep them the same just in case we have to go back but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create another one yeah and this one's gonna be lib screen decode map I think that's the best way of doing it right and so we need to create here a new routine no not game screen live screen that's it that's what we need so let's copy that put that down here now I'm going to change this around and you'll see why in a minute so I ought to change it in here or I will forget so that's going to now be A and that's going to now be Y and and because we are interleafing remember it's the character followed by how many times it appears so we are going to um, write some code but technically it's not ours well technically but c64 mark writ has written a decoder but he's written a decoder for the grouping type as we're going to write the decoder for the interleaf but this routine is based on his um coding design for a better word so, so we're going to load accumulator as the high value and y as the low value of the map data. So we need to store them. So we're going to store y in a location called load map bytes. Plus one because it's going to be self modifying code. And we're going to store the high byte in, same thing again, load map byte plus two now because the character comes first and then how many times it runs we need to increase y by one because the starting point of the uh, run lengths is one after the character we're going to 
first. We're going to do that. We're going to add zero to it. So if oh no, that's right. That's right because that's the low and the accumulator's got the high. So if I and I and Y um, crosses the page boundary, then it should set the ca set the carry. I'm not too sure. Let's have a let's have a look. I think it sets the carry. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to have to do a, a quick branch, if not equal, uh, around. So we don't need to clear the carry, but I'm going to do it. And then we're going to add one to the accumulator by pass high addition. Let's call it a proper name. So when we increase Y, if it goes to 255 to zero, so that's equal, we're going to add one to the high byte. Now, We've got to store the result sty in at load map length plus one and sta at load map length plus two. So that's setting those two self-modifying locations and then we're going to load LDA the screen pointers store it in another location called store map plus one LDA the high byte of uh, screen RAM So we're going to start our looper now. So load map length. So we're going to load the map length, which is load. And he used a very inventive dummy address, which I thought was very clever. Another cup of tea. So because we added one, that is loading the byte after the start of the screen data which is the length information then we're going to say branch if equal because if it's zero to at exit decoder and that's why we put zeros at the end of the file so we know when the the code the encoding is finished now we need another uh, another attribute which is another self-modifying location and this one he decided to call beef and then store map which is another self-modifying location and he called that don't blame me blame him he called it that So we've loaded the length. Now we've loaded the character for that length. And now we've started storing it in the memory location. So what we need to do now is once we've stored it in the memory location is we need now to um, increase 
the map location. And if it's not across the page boundary, we want it to um, bypass the high byte increase. So at get next char is here. So we're going to decrease the uh, how many times it's running. And if it's not zero, then we're going to loop back round to store map because we're still storing the same character in the location. But if it is a zero, that means we've we've done it. We've ran that through that. So we're going to clear the carry. We're going to load the uh, load map length routine. We're going to add two to it because remember we're in sets of two and then we're going to store it straight back. Ah no, I've left, forgot the app sign. Just one. And then we're going to do the same thing for the high byte. But this one is going to add zero. So if the carry set, it adds one. There we go. Oh, and I forgot the at signs again. So that's now updated the map uh, length location. So here we have another label called next chart. And this one is, we're going to do exactly the same as this, but for the character location. So it's load map byte. There we go. Then once we've updated the two uh, map locations, we can then jump back to where it all starts at load map length, which is up here and loads the next length character in and then loads the character in. In fact, we don't need that now. Don't need that. And then at the bottom, we've got exit decoder. And that's going to be an RTS. So that should work. So we're storing where the map location is, the original value. Then we're increasing the original value by one. So we can then store it in the map length location. Set the, the start of the screen. Load the length in. Load the character in. Store it on the screen. Increase the screen location. De decrease the number of characters we need to do it. And it runs around. Then we need to update the map length by two because we're in pack um, sets of two and load the um, map byte in by two. Sounds like a plan. So that should work. Now we just need to give it a name. And what did I call it in here? There we go. So that's what we're going to call it. Now that, that should work. That should work. That should decode the encoding and it should put it on the screen. All right then, shall we try it? F5. Oh, something's gone a bit wry. Oh, that's because I'm here. F5. Right, so something's gone wrong. Duplicate. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I got it twice. That's bite, isn't it? Wally. Right, F5. Come on. Here we go. Thank you. Ooh, where'd it go? There you are. Right, let's press space. Uh, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do joystick. Easy. Look at that. <laughs> wow. It's decoded it straight away. I was expecting it to error because I've changed it. I've changed it from way Mark's done it. So this should be the th third time, so it should go to the next level. Oh, that was close. Right, so it should go to level two. Right, let's see if it loads the level two screen in. Oh, it did. Look at that. wicked and that is now using the new functionality in CBM Prod Studio to encode the screen into less bytes than it was before so it's going to be interesting to see okay let's do this right so i'm going to build i'm going to build it to memory so we can see where the end address is yeah because the map the, the screen locations and the maps maps are right at the very end of the the, the, pr the program so here we are there's the dump so we're all the way down to the bottom There we go. So we finish at 6E, 6E40, 6E40. Well, in fact, it's 42. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take this interleafing off now. Let's do it again. Build to memory. Come on. Oh, it's done it. It's looking at the wrong screen. Right. Let's see now, go all the way down to the bottom. Let's see how much space we have saved. And I think it's going to be a lot. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Seven, 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 eight. Where's my calculator? Have I still got it running? No. Right, calc. So we're now saying. Seven 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 eight minus six e four two equals look at that two and a half k well 
just over 2k if you do binary but two and a half cat two and a half kilobytes we've saved that's uh 50 58% saving so 50 that's got to be 58 isn't it let's do that again I've just forgot the number minus 60 4 2 yeah so that's that divided by 4,000 should give us the we mean zero oh okay okay we're in program mode aren't we right seven 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 eight divided by six e four two I'm gonna write it down this time you are choking me seven 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 eight minus six E four two two three five nine right write that down two three five eight let's put it in normal mode so two three five eight divided by four thousand because we have four screens that is a fifty nine percent compression fifty nine percent over half we've saved over half 59 percent 60 60 percent let's make it 60 nice a fancy number so that's that is an incredible saving that is a really really incredible saving we do control y control y what control what why oh okay that is an amazing amount of memory saved so effectively for the same amount of memory i could get another three four five screens in wow for the same amount of memory we could make it five screens wow okay well there you go we have now implemented a brand new feature that's in the cbm pro studio and i'd like to thank c64 mark for his code that he shared with me for the grouping type of uh, encoding because i just modified that for the interleaf and also gray defender for his excellent video right at the very start when it first came out that showed you how to write a macro use use a macro uh, library for this so if you like this video hit that like button if you didn't fine hit the dislike button always leave me a comment and if you want to support me in any any level consider becoming a patron of mine all the money raised in patreon comes back to the channel and with that i will say see you in the next episode take care bye I'd like to thank all the Patreons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.